the school district was like, oh, you're in 12th and you're in 10th grade in the Philippines. Your grades are really good. Why don't you just go to college? And I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. It's, it's too early. I'm still 12. When I got here, I was like, oh, there's somebody from, you know, this state or country. So it's kind of like I'm seeing a lot of different people in one place. It's more scary because me being a 4'11 <laughs> in the middle school that are very, very tall and like way bigger than me, it's kind of a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. And in a, in a classroom setting, it's a little bit more awkward because, you know, we grew up in the Philippines where like we have to respect our, our teachers, right? we're live we're recording hi mercy thank you so much for joining me today i'm excited to get to know more about you your life in the philippines and your life now here mm -hmm. in the states but before we talk more about your life i want our viewers to know you personally where are you from and what are you currently doing yeah so i'm from the philippines i'm from baguio and then i moved here back in 2014 and um, currently, I'm working as a barista, but I'm going, to, I'm applying to look for like a professional job in the business management um, department. Nice. So Baguio, wow, we're in Baguio. Um, so it's like a province, but well, it's in a province in a mountain province. But I usually just typically say Baguio because that's the most popular one. Is it somewhere in Sagada? Because I love Sagada. It's even more remote. To Sagada. Really? <laughs> yeah. What, so like, what is it called? It's Tajan. It's like about maybe a couple hours away from Sagada. Oh, I see. Do yeah. you have a dialect in Tajan? Yes, we do Kantanaoy and Ilocano. In Ilocano. So you can speak yes. Ilocano. Yes. In the other dialect. <laughs> yes. Nice. I love it. So you moved from the Philippines to the States in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, were you petitioned by your parents? It was petitioned by my, so it's, it was originally was supposed to be like back in the early 1990s, but you know, everything was changing. So I think the beginning was my grandma who did it. And then after she passed, it transferred to my, my aunt, which is my dad's sister. And then it took like 20 years for us to get here because <laughs> it changed wow. so much that, you know, it took a lot of paperwork to do. Wow, that's interesting. So yeah. that means whoever petitioned originally, like if that person for some reason, you know, passed, it will mm -hmm. the, the petition will be passed down to the next kin or to the beneficiary or something like that. I think what happened was it just ended because, you know, the petitioner um, passed. So we had to start another one. And then this oh. time it took a little bit longer. Yeah, because my grandma passed back in 2005. And then it was fine. The petition was finalized back in 2014. So, yeah, wow. <laughs> it took well, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, sorry to hear about your 90s. grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your aunt petitioned you to go to the state, or your mom petitioned your parents, and then your parents petitioned all of us, you? all three. Wow. All three. I didn't know. I didn't know that you know you can be petitioned by your aunt. I thought you can only be petitioned by your parents mm -hmm. i don't know it's like a sibling thing that they did and i guess because mm -hmm. i was a minor that i was able to come with them i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know if paper works but that's what i that's what i've heard so that's what i know <laughs> yeah well that's that's an interesting story um and then when you found out that you're being petitioned uh -huh. is that something that you wanted to do you know, I feel like for most kids in the Philippines, when they found out that they're going to be petitioned, they're like so excited. They're like, oh, I'm going to get out of the Philippines. I can uh -huh. go to the state and live a more comfortable life. So was that your um, your your main initial reaction? And then did it change as you as you got an older? Because when you when you're older, that means you have your own friends, you know, right. and mm -hmm. classmates or maybe boyfriend in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, because I was like, I was 12 when I got, when I moved here. I think early on, my family was like, oh, in the future, you're going to be going to the, to the States. So I think they ingrained it on me. Like, oh, 
in a few years you're going there i think i was grade six or grade four somewhere in between when i got my first passport and i was like oh we're gonna go there pretty soon and then six years later we're here <laughs> Yeah, so you were sort of like warmed up already, so you're like mentally yeah, yeah. prepared for it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you and, were 12 years old mm -hmm. when you moved. So you just graduated um, grade school during that time? No, I think that was the very first year of the K to 12, actually. So I was oh. in going 10th grade when I moved to the US. And then when I got to Las Vegas, the school district was like, oh, you're in 12 and you're in 10th grade in the philippines your grades are really good why don't you just go to college and i'm like oh wait hold on it's it's too early i'm still 12. <laughs> what yeah wow because <laughs> apparently they go by the grades they don't care about your age but as long as you do really really good in school wherever you're coming from it's your choice if you want to continue or you want to go back to the age appropriate grade and then you can start from there <laughs> wow that's a very interesting that it is, is interesting you know. <laughs> yeah and our grading system is for sure different than the grading system here in the states because they have like b c right like mm -hmm. f and Ours a like a plus like that 80. 79 <laughs> 80 yeah so <laughs> yeah it's very interesting for me to know mm -hmm. how they're able to like you know assess your grade right. and convert that into the grading system mm -hmm. here yeah, and so so you didn't proceed to college. So you no, finished. No, I went back to middle school because mo my aunt at that time was a teacher at the county. Um, so she talked to the district managers and told them like, oh, she's too young. She's only 12 and she's coming from the Philippines, which is going to be like a huge culture shock. Yeah, give and the girl a break, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then me going to college at 12, and then graduating maybe four years later at 16, no one's going to hire me. I'm only 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. How old are you now? I'm 23. 23. <laughs> so it's been about 10 years. Nice. Wow. So when you move from the Philippines, so I'm guessing you first moved in Las Vegas. Before, it's before California, Texas. San Diego, and then mm -hmm. Las Vegas, and then Houston. Houston, okay. Mm -hmm. So when you moved to California, um, at 12 years old what, what was your experience like was it you know because it, it took you a while it, it took a while for you to get here in the states right you mm -hmm. went through the process of being petitioned and so right. when you first arrived in california was it something that you've been ex expecting or like dreaming about i think for me it wasn't more like a dream it's more like it's ingrained they're like oh you're you're definitely going to the states because you know you have your passport and then even when I was younger, when my aunts come to visit from the States, they're like, oh, I'll see you and I'll see you to the States. So it's kind of like it's expected. So it's more like it's not a dream. It's more about like, oh, I'm going there because, you know, I have to go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not more like an option for me back then. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Did, did you have any expectations of the States? Chocolates. Chocolates. <laughs> Chocolates. <laughs> Is there any specific chocolate? I used to love the Twix bar. It's still, I mean, it's still my favorite, but um, Twix bar was my my chocolate back then. <laughs> wow, I love it. Um, all right, so you went to school in California. Um, was it was the school system different, or did you get along with your classmates immediately? What kind of adjustments did you have to do? So um, I didn't go to school to California. I went to school to in Vegas. In Vegas, because okay. I got to California in May, and then I'm, we got and then we moved to Vegas around August, which is like the school semester. And then my biggest shock was school buses. Of course, we don't have that in the province in the Philippines, and oh, yes. um, also you know different races. Because in the Philippines, we're only used to like seeing oh Fili fellow Filipinos, <laughs> only one race. <laughs> And especially back in the province, you don't really see anybody but the people that are the same, you know, race as you <laughs> and speak mm -hmm. the same language as you. I think the most that we see in the province is like, oh, somebody from Manila or somebody from down south. Those are the, like the most things that I've seen before <laughs> when I was in the Philippines. But when I got here, I was like, oh, there's somebody from, you know, this state or country. So it's kind of like 
I'm seeing a lot of different people in one place. <laughs> yeah, did, did that make you excited or did it kind of scare you or make it make it feel awkward? It's more scary because me being a 4'11 <laughs> in the middle school that are very, very tall and like way bigger than me, it's kind of a little bit intimidating. Mm-hmm. And in a, in a classroom setting, it's a little bit more awkward because You know, we grew up in the Philippines where, like, we have to respect our, our teachers, right? We mm-hmm. can't talk back to them or we can't do certain things in a classroom. But when I first started in Vegas, everybody was, like, on their phones or, like, some people were eating. And I'm like, oh, is that normal here? <laughs> like, can't you wait for lunch to come and then you can eat? But apparently not. You can eat inside the classroom and you can use... Instead of using pa- pen and paper like we're used to, we're using laptops, iPads. So it's 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 a totally different thing. Wow. So how long <laughs> yeah. did it take for you to adjust? It took me a little while, but um, since my aunt was a teacher, she did help me a lot in adjusting. Yeah. Mm, that's good. I've heard so many stories of Filipino kids being embarrassed during lunchtime at school because their mm-hmm. parents they give them adobo for adobo. their baon for their lunch pancit for their lunch or even uh-huh. sometimes paxil so did that happen to you <laughs> no and for fortunately it didn't happen to me because my aunt that i was living with at that time her husband was also um white mexican so like most of her food were like snacks Mm. And then we only we do more meals to, all together. But like, if I'm going to school, I ha- I eat breakfast, heavy breakfast, and then just a snack at school. So I didn't. Fortunately, I didn't get to experience those. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and you speak really good English now. You know, you have uh, you have American accent. Mm-hmm. Um. So, but when you were 12 years old, um, did you know how to speak English already, or did you know a little, a little, or did you have to adjust to that? Um. We do speak English. As well, um, it. I mean, I still have that Filipino accent when I get nervous when presenting, and you know, at the front when when group when group stuff. But um, I've heard that a lot of people since, like you said, I have an American accent. And then when I'm talking to other Filipino kids or like um, Filipinos in general, they're like, "Oh, do you?" They have to ask me if I speak Tagalog because of the accent. They assume that right. I don't. <laughs> and yeah, then when yeah. I switch, they're like, "Oh." Oh, you're really good in Tagalog. Ang galing mo pala. <laughs> oh, this is the time we're gonna switch to Tagalog now. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little hard for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and you live? Do you still live with your parents, or you move out already? Um, I'm still living with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. my, and... my plan was supposed to get out after graduation. Um, after I find like a stable income, but right now it's kind of like in between, and then our lease is still haven't finished in the apartment. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Let me just stay with you guys until then. <laughs> Save yeah. money, anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And you know, in the Philippines, you know, we don't usually move out until we're married, right? No, no. no it's like it's like the norm if you move, if you still live with your parents until you're 30 or 40, mm-hmm. you're only gonna get kicked out once you're married. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they won't even kick you out. They're like, "Oh, do you want to stay longer?" <laughs> yeah. Do you do you, do you want um do you want to talk to your boyfriend to stay in the other room? Just stay right. here. <laughs> yeah, you can save up money. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe you can buy a house by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or sometimes in the Philippines, what we do is we, they build another house right next to them, right? Exactly. <laughs> Or they they close. build yeah they build another level on top mm-hmm. of their house. So It's like a multi-generation house. Like yeah. I stay here in the first floor you guys stay in the second floor your kids will stay in the third floor <laughs> yes exactly yeah so um all right so you moved from california to las vegas and then you mm-hmm. moved to texas what mm-hmm. what was the reason for moving to vegas to um texas so i moved from vegas to texas because my parents were here Because my mom's sister was also here and we we're living with them for a, for a little bit. I think for about five, five years, six years. And then after that, um, so I did my middle, last year of middle school here and then high school and college here. So it's usually, it's, we moved here because my, my parents got a job here. And then I temporarily lived with my aunt in Vegas because... She was the one who knew about school system here. 
So mm. I was a little bit more comfortable going to school because of her. Mm. So That's I wasn't nice. terribly culture shock with school. It's just, you know, it's a little bit different in terms of mannerism. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Tell me about your life um, back in the Philippines. What was life like as compared to what you have now or when you moved to the States? I think I'm, my life before was mainly, you know, since I was 12, I think mainly playing outside, eating chocolates, you know, like staying out late, even later than 5 p.m. and your mom is like calling you with a slipper in her hand. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I did. I did. A, I had a really, really good life back over there because it's easy. It's easy now to look back and say like, oh, I had fun because I get to do this. I don't have to worry about, you know, paying bills or going to work. <laughs> so it was it was fun. <laughs> and yeah. of course, I do have family more family over there as opposed to here yeah. so it was more fun with the cousins around my age mm -hmm. to hang out with yeah yeah that's true and so when you moved um did you get to visit the philippines after a couple of years or did you have to wait until you have your actually i haven't gone back ever since oh, i got here this is your sign <laughs> to go back to the philippines and visit Maybe in a couple of years we'll never know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know like I, I mean, I do have the desire, but it's not strong enough for me to go there just yet. Because for the past, I think I, ever since I started working in the middle of high school, like probably when I was 17, 18, all I did was go to school, work, school, work. There's there's nothing in between. I, can't, I did not travel or anything. I just went straight to college and started working again. <laughs> so really there's really no time to go visit anywhere mm, i see were you the only child oh uh, yes okay so you didn't grow up with anybody else so just you alone. no just me and then during summers in the philippines i would go to my cousin's house which is where mm -hmm. my lola is at nice i see how about your parents have they been back to the philippines ever since oh, yeah. they were petitioned oh really they've been back you like didn't several times already <laughs> you didn't join them no, because every every time they wanted to go, I'm doing something else. Like the very first time they left, I think it was a school school semester, and then the second time I was um, doing clinicals, and then the third time was during COVID. So <laughs> I didn't really have the chance to go. <laughs> wow! But at least you know the the next time you go to the Philippines and visit, it's gonna be. I was gonna be pure because, vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. When did you graduate from college? A couple months ago, like uh, May, May 10, I see. this okay. year, yeah, so two months ago. What did you study? Uh, business manage, uh, admin, yeah, and international I, trade. Yeah, and you mentioned in the form that you filled out that you're also um, trying to build your own business. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. What I is it about? It's more like crocheting. It's, it's the one I'm wearing right now, actually. <laughs> oh, wow, I love yeah. it. <laughs> It's wow. a little bit unfinished, so you'll probably see some strings on the sides, but like this one, this one right here, it's still not finished. I haven't tucked it in yet, but um, it's pretty wearable. <laughs> I love I it. I love it. the color. Thank you. I started it. I started crocheting about a year ago. You know, something switched from embroidery and sewing, and I found that I like it, and it's quicker to make clothes from it. And um, a few days ago, I started officially doing um, Instagram on it. Wow, yeah, I think I saw a couple of videos from your Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. When you were um, crocheting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, was it already a talent? Did you already know how to do that? Or did you have no, to? No, I actually learned videos? during um, the late, um, I think late 2020, I think, is when I started learning. So, but back then it was only like a scarf, so like a straight, a straight project, a really, really long rectangle, but it's been a few years since I picked it up again, so. <laughs> That's good. Well, I'm excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so as a Filipino-American living in the States, um, what do you think are your main challenges that you're trying to overcome? My main challenges? I think from early on, I got used to life in here because from early on, I did work when I was 17 too. I, yeah, I was 17 and I first had my job. 
at first it was a little hard because you know the temptations of money and you know just not wanting to go like i have no idea what to do in college so you know as a filipino and i'm pretty sure this is like a wide known that filipinos become nurses <laughs> those are the mm-hmm. things so i kind of did get into that pressure of like oh I have to be a nurse or something like that. So I did that for like, I think two years up until, you know, the start of COVID. And then my struggle was like going against it and moving or like changing my major to business, which a lot, I think a lot of my family was, they were happy, but you know, I still get side eyes like, oh, you should have been a nurse. You should have been making money right now. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, but I'm not going to be healthy in a couple of years. yeah that's like my main struggles when I was in college is like going against you know the norm or like oh you're Filipino you're supposed to be a nurse like why why are you in this department (laughs) yeah yeah so what did you do did you talk to your parents and tell them about your desire to stop yeah you know studying yeah I did tell them about it and they're like oh yeah we're happy with whatever you want to do I mean granted that they weren't the one paying tuition so like they're fine with me whatever I want to do but my aunt on the other side she she's a nurse so she's like oh oh why did you why did you switch from nursing to another one like are you sure it's gonna be like profitable are you gonna make money out of it it's it's one of those questions like oh they're concerned for my future after college but like to me I mean it's business you can do anything with that degree right (laughs) you can build your own or you can work for somebody exactly exactly. which one (laughs) Yeah, that's so true. Wow, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so how about now that now that you're done with college? Um, do you feel like any pressure looking for a job related to your studies? Mm-hmm. For me, I think the pressure is coming from me, my, from myself, <laughs> actually. Because <laughs> like, I did get an offer, um, I think a few days after graduation from the company that I interned with, but unfortunately it's too far and it's from somewhere that I don't know anybody else. And it's a totally different um, environment where it snows or as opposed to Texas where it doesn't snow or it snows, mm-hmm. but it's only an inch. But um, I decided to decline that. And, you know, right now it's been two months and I think the struggle is like, oh, what if I accepted that job over there? I would have had a job already, but the problem is it's too far. <laughs> Yeah, so you're going to be kind of like far from your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's far from the family. And it's somewhere that I really don't know anybody, not even like a family friend or a, fa- a friend that knows a friend, like literally nothing. <laughs> I don't know anybody. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's a that's a big decision it is, to yeah. make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for someone that's always with somebody, it's it's a totally different thing. Like in a perspective, it's different. But like in a job perspective, it what if I took it, you know, <laughs> what, what, right. what would life be? But right yeah. now, I'm like, oh, you know what, it's okay. Yeah, there's okay. always that what ifs. <laughs> yeah, there's always that what if. I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't take that challenge. Like, it's it's a shame, but, you know, there might be something better after. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. And so in the Philippines, um, we're very family-oriented, right? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, because in the Philippines, Um, our parents, they pay for our tuition fee Mm -hmm. um, to go to college, right? Mm -hmm. And then after graduating from college, you know, not all parents, but most parents, they kind of expect their kids to have a job already after Mm -hmm. uh, finishing college. And they sort of expect the kids to also give back Mm -hmm. um, to them or, or to the family. And now that you are in the States, do you feel like it's the same thing with your parents or or not because, you know, you're already in the States and they're, they're working? I think it's a little bit different for me because um, college-wise, ever since I started working, I pay for all my school, cars and everything, insurance, everything. And then, so I wasn't expecting them um, to pay that, which, which actually made it easier for me to decide to switch majors without really having any problems about that. So that's a plus. Um, but I don't. I think they're they're expecting me to have a job after college in the pers- profession that I you know um, chose. But it's just you know it's a Filipino thing that we just they just don't say anything. 
mm. they say something behind you or like on your side or you know something to your cousins or like you yes, know their fellow yeah. does but like they just won't say it to your face that's that's a thing like but i mean sometimes i would feel it they're like oh it should have been nice you know if you had a job by now if you would have and sometimes i get a side comment we're like oh you should have been a nurse by now <laughs> and i'm like oh, that should yeah, especially with with your Filipino relatives, right? Like, yeah, you know, they're very titas are very brutal. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> they more are. brutal than your than your parents. They say, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not really negative, but they just they're just very frank, no mm-hmm. filter. They are. They are. <laughs> <laughs> they they actually they actually say that's that's what makes Filipinos very resilient. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're respected in your field as nurses as well. <laughs> right, exactly. <'Cause> they fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, as far as I know, I did not study college here um, in the States, but as far mm. as I know, um, student loan is something that you're going to have to deal with, you know, when mm-hmm. you go to college. So, so mm-hmm. you have to take a student loan. So for me, since I've been working for a while now, I did not have any student loans. Everything was paid off for, which is which is great. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's to very great. Have, yes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, for a lot of um, some of my friends and a lot of people that I know, they do have student loans just because they weren't qualified for this thing called FAFSA. I don't know. It's kind of like a grant that the government gives you to help you um, with tuitions and stuff. I did have that one as well. Um, but a lot of my friends, since their parents work really, really um, good jobs that pays more than the minimum of the state that, you know, they required to. So they weren't um, granted that that funds. So what they did was, um, and their parents were not happy to help them. It's, it's not that they're not happy, but they're not helping them with that tuition. So they the didn't end, have the finances. Yeah. In the oh, end, yeah. they're the one that's burdening themselves with the student loans which yeah. is kind of pretty sad because you were supposed but cultures here is more like they're very independent oh your money once you're once you're 18 do whatever you want i don't care you as long as you know i don't i'm not in it it's fine <laughs> wow um anyway um so i'm glad that you still know how to speak tagalog is <laughs> I that do. something is that something that you've been wanting to retain because i feel like uh, for most kids who immigrated from the Philippines mm-hmm. to the States, especially if they Im- immigrated here at mm-hmm. an early age, like early let's age. say mm-hmm. seven or eight, you know, and most of them, they don't know how to speak um, English or Tagalog anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so um, what did you do in order to to keep your, you know, mother tongue? I think. Because at home, we speak Kankanawi and Ilocano, outside English, of course. And I think I was losing my Tagalog when I was le- learning Spanish because it was a requirement for us. And then when my cousin's wife came, she she's Tagalog. She's from uh, Rizal, I think. And then mm-hmm. that's when I started picking it, picking it up again. But it's, it's still a Taglish. But um, right now, I'm retaining it because my boyfriend's Filipino, too. <laughs> yeah, so he speaks like to Filipino you in Filipinos. Tagalog. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So so you speak and understand Tagalog? Yes, I speak and understand it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice, because my last question for you, and you have to um, answer in Tagalog. Um, oh, no. Is, anong, 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 actually, even for me, you know, I can speak English and I can speak Tagalog. But if I speak in Tagalog language, it's kind of awkward sometimes i can i don't know uh some of the deep tagalog words uh-huh. yeah um, but way, anyway I have to explain it like oh what's that <laughs> yeah yeah um and actually when there was a time my dad was here i mean actually a few times that, that he was here i was talking to him in tagalog and then i was talking to my husband in in english and then my husband was talking to me and my, i was also talking to my dad so my <laughs> My, it's like your my brain dad, is like, oh. yes, my dad, we, we, we were on the, we, we were sitting at the, the same table and then my dad was talking to me in Tagalog and then my husband was talking to me in English and then my husband asked me a question in English and then I, I responded to him in Tagalog, in Tagalog. And, then, <laughs> and then I was very confident. I was like, ito, ito yun. And he was like, what? And then I repeated it again three times, ito yun. And he was like, did you just speak to me in Tagalog? <laughs> wrong person. Yes, wrong person. Sorry. Wrong person. Yeah. But anyway, uh, for my last question, 
anong mga anong masasabi mo or ma- advice na mabibigay mo sa mga um, siguro kids or mga tao na gustong mag-immigrate um, sa states? Mm-hmm. Does, does it have to be in Tagalog? Yes, I'll this try, is the I'll challenge. Try. I'll try. <laughs> um, yung, yung advice ko is um, maging ano sila, uh, maging determined. Kasi may mga friends ako na they're interns from Baguio. They, napunta sila dito, I think, a year or two ago. And they didn't know anybody. Tapos, um, maswerte sila kasi nandito ako. So, tinulungan ko sila. Yung nakita ko sa kanila is yung persistence nila. Tsaka yung, yung courage nila na pumunta dito na kahit wala siling kakilala. Basta, may work sila. Nakapunta na sila dito. Um, granted na yung work na yun is only for a year and they can extend. But, yung nakita ko sa kanila na talagang yung determination yung gusto talaga na lang makapunta dito kahit mahal kahit mahal yung ano yung ginasa sila sa Pilipinas so yung masasabi ko lang is pag may dream ka na makapunta kahit saan man yun US Europe basta kahit saan yung kalangan mo lang is maging ano ka maging determined and uh, kailanganin mo na mag-rely sa sarili mo na kahit saan ka mapunta, okay ka lang kasi ka- meron yung sarili mo. Tapos, in, since you don't have families nearby, but you just have to make sure na okay lang yung pag-iisip mo, yung health, yung health and your pag-iisip is like the biggest thing for me. Kasi, maka-homesick ka. I'm pretty sure you felt it too when you came, the very first time you came. Tapos, talk to people. Kahit, Filipinos man yun na nasa Pilipinas, taga dito, or anybody, just talk to somebody na pwede kang makapag-rely na pag napunta ka na dito, it, it would greatly, greatly help you. Tapos yung pagpunta dito, it's it's not hard. Um, work ethic, they like Filipinos because we're very hardworking. So, pag nakuha ka nila, just, you know, retain that work ethic na magaling ka. Kasi may chance ka na for a long time magiging ito na yung work mo, dito ka natitira. Kasi pag nagustuhan ka ng employee, they're gonna go as far and beyond na bayaran lahat ng gastos mo, public ng Pilipinas, to fix your papers and then come back here again and help you find um, a place to live to. So, just determination and courage. Yan lang. <laughs> Yay! Good job! Actually, ang, ang, ang pohonan lang talaga if gusto mo mag-abroad or mm-hmm. mag-immigrate sa ibang bansa is mm-hmm. courage. Courage, yep. Yeah. talaga ng job. Kasi yep. kahit Lapis na standing. gaano karami ang pera mo or kahit gaano kadali man or kahirap yung process ng pag-move sa states or sa ibang bansa, kung wala kang mm-hmm. lakas ng loob, you will never be Matatalo successful. ka. Matatalo oh. ka. Bawal In Tagalog, na- Oh, kasi sabi ko sa kanila, bawal lang mahina dito. Like, yeah, sure, you work eight hours a day standing, you know, serving people. They might be rude to you, but you won't survive the U.S. in general or anywhere else pag mahina yung loob. Hmm, like, kailangan makapalang mo lang, mo talaga. Oo, yung konting bagay lang, medyo na ano ka, naiiyak ka na, or gusto mo na agad, babalik ka na agad sa Pilipinas. Yung mga ganun, yung, I think yung mga ganun na pag-iisip, they have a very limited chance of um, going somewhere or even close to being where their dreams are supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today, <laughs> Mercy. I enjoyed our conversation. <laughs> Me too. I did enjoy your conversation very much. <laughs>